So I've got this gravel bike here and I've had it, had it a while actually. And when I first built this up, I used 700 by 40C tires. Pretty good for keeping speed on the flats, but not amazing on the rough stuff. Since then, I've upped the tires to 700 by 50C. These are technically mountain bike tires, but they're wicked. More grip and more cushion on bumpy trails. So then let's take this one step further, a dirt cheap suspension fork from AliExpress. Yeah, this, uh, this, sh this should be interesting. My name, as always, is Luke, and welcome back to Trace Velo. Okay, so this thing cost me 92 quid from AliExpress, but with taxes and shipping, the total came out to 112.50. So <laughs> yeah, pretty cheap for this thing. It's a suspension fork that's been specifically designed for gravel bikes like this. So there's not masses of travel in the suspension. I think it's only 40 millimeters. Do not use for, <laughs> for downhill free ride. But if I turn it over, hopefully you can see the, the brake mounts there, they should support flat mount calipers. So let's get this thing installed and see if I can ruin this uh, perfectly <laughs> capable gravel bike. I'm pretty confident it's gonna drastically change the handling because it's gonna, it's gonna raise the front of the bike quite a lot. And this does weigh substantially more than the original fork. So this thing weighs just over 1.5 kilograms. From recollection, the original fork on here, I think that weighs about 400 grams. So it's gonna add at least a kilogram, but I'll weigh, I'll weigh the bike as it sits here and then I'll get this installed and weigh it after, and I guess we'll see. On the scales right now, with pretty much everything on it, pedals, bottle cages, Garmin mount, we are looking at just under 9.1 kilos. So let's crack on and transform this into a bad mountain bike. So <laughs> yeah, first step, let's get the fork off. Right, so get the wheel off first of all, then remove the brake caliper. Easy peasy. And apologies for the strobing on some of these wide shots. The neon signs seem to interfere with the frame rate I run on my GoPro, I think. Okay, so I've removed the front brake caliper. And yeah, and that, that was easy enough, obviously. But there's one thing I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to reuse this existing front brake hose. Because basically the olive that's been crimped on the end and this nut I can't get off. It means that I can't pull it back through the fork because it's internally rooted through this original fork here. So I'm gonna have to cut this a little bit shorter and hopefully it's still long enough to fit with the, with the new forks. So I did leave a little bit of slack in the front brake hose for this purpose, but hopefully it's gonna fit. I'm just gonna have to cut it fit this new fork and find out. So hoping to reuse that brake hose, we'll see if that works soon enough. But with the caliper off, let's get that fork removed. Right there, so that was absolutely fine. That came out no problem. And I've checked that the headset bearings are absolutely fine. So both of these are good. They, they don't need replacing, which is great. And I can use all this gubbins on, on the new fork. But there is a difference between these two, which I, I may as well address. So this is a carbon fork with a carbon steerer tube, and it's got one of these compression plugs in. You can't use this type on this new suspension fork because this is an aluminium steerer tube. So rather than using, uh, well, this type of compression plug, which I'm very familiar with, I'm gonna have to fit this star nut here. And I've, <laughs> I've never fitted one of these before, so that's gonna be interesting. And this basically gets wedged inside here. But before I do that, I just wanna make sure that this steerer tube is the right length. I'm pretty confident that it is and won't need cutting, but I'm gonna mock this up into the frame and put, and put the bars on sort of loosely just to check. Once I've done that and I've figured out it, if it needs cutting or not, then I will fit this star nut. Um, yeah, like I said, I've never fitted one of these before and I think you need a special tool. Well, it's recommended to have a special tool to fit this in there straight, but I also think you can just hammer it in. So yeah, we'll see how that goes in a minute. But firstly, let me mock this up and check this steerer tube length. So yeah, just getting the forks mocked up onto the frame here. And, and again, sorry for the strobing, looks really dreadful here. I'll try and get it sorted for next time. So I've basically fitted the forks into the frame and the fitment is really, really good actually. So the steerer tube is the perfect length. It's sat just there, just underneath the level of the handlebars. So I don't need to cut it or anything like that. So I can fit the star nut, that's good to go. The, the fitment with the bearings is yeah, spot on, absolutely no rubbing or anything like that, so that's great. Unfortunately, however, I, I, I fitted, well, loosely fitted the front brake caliper and I didn't really account for the fact you've got an extra 40 millimeters in length on the forks here. So obviously this was never really gonna fit. So the, the front brake hose is just not, it's not long enough. So annoyingly, I'm gonna have to take this out, undo the bar tape and re-plumb 
a new brake hose for the front brake. Not a massive deal, but it's gonna take me another sort of 20, 20 minutes, something like that. But yeah, um, all in all, it's a pretty easy project actually. So I'll get that done, we can fit the star nut and we're basically finished. So replacing that brake hose was, yeah, nice and straightforward. The electronic L2 group set that I'm running on this bike, it, it does have its flaws, but thankfully plumbing brake lines isn't one of them. Yeah, super easy. Okay, so the, uh, the brake hose at the front has been replaced, so that's uh, all good to go. So next up, let's get this star nut fitted. So what I've done is I've kind of combined it with the top cap and then this long sort of bolt you use to hold it all together. And I do have a second one here in case it all goes <laughs> completely wrong. But what I'm, what I'm led to believe is that I can combine these three parts and then use the top cap as a bit of a guide to ensure this goes in straight. So I'm just gonna pop that on the top and then using, using a hammer, just kind of pound it <laughs> into, into the tube. Now, if, if, if it all goes completely wrong, basically, I, I can just punch it straight out the bottom. You can see it's hollow. So if, yeah, if this gets completely mangled, I'll just push it all the way down and have another go with the other one up there. But um, yeah, I'm just gonna sort of send it and <laughs> see how it goes. So wish me luck. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get a bigger hammer. That is not working. Kind of working, maybe? I think it's working. I think that's done. Okay, so <laughs> it's in there. Hopefully you can see it's been seated, but if I show you, it's not, it's not partic <laughs> particularly straight. So what I'm gonna try and do, I'm gonna try and use that socket onto one side and see if I can straighten this out. I mean, it'll do the job, but yeah, maybe this was a bad idea. So by using this nut and just popping it in the top there and then hitting the appropriate edge of it with a hammer, I was able to quite nicely uh, straighten that star nut out actually, if you can see in there nice and straight, bit of a hacky way to, to get it done. Certainly, but it has worked and the threads are still absolutely fine. So I call that good. So now that star nut is, uh, yeah, now, now that's in place. All I've got to do is cut the brake hose to length, grease the headset bearings, and then uh, yeah, bleed the brakes and we are finished. So let's go. Now, whenever I show shots like this, I always get questions like, why aren't you using your bike stand? And to be honest, I, I find it gets in the way most of the time. Maybe if my workspace was a bit bigger, I'd make use of it, but I get most of my stuff done on the floor, to be honest with you. All right, cool, so here it is. And I am really, really chuffed with how it's come out. It, it almost looks stock actually. And the fitment for everything was absolutely fine. I didn't need to adjust at all. It just basically slotted in. The front of the bike is definitely much higher. So the handling is gonna be different, but I'll test that when I get it out on the road. Like I said, I had to replace this front brake hose. It doesn't root it internally, obviously the brake hose, but there is a little clip here to uh, kind of uh, yeah, keep the cable away and well, keep the hose out of the tire, which is great. So that's cool. And there are two dials on the shocks. I haven't had a chance to play around with either yet, but this one you can kind of, well, you can lock out the shocks if you're on the flat and then you can kind of adjust how soft you want them to be. And then over here, you can remove this cap and add or remove air to change the overall stiffness of them depending on your weight or whatever. Um, so yeah, like I said, I think it's gonna add about a kilo, probably just over. So let's get it up on the scales and try it out. So it was 9.095, so just under um, 9.1 kilos before. And right now it is 9.995. So it's added, oh, well, it's added 900 grams actually. So that fork must have been a little heavier than I anticipated. So yeah, overall, just under a kilo, 900 grams it's added, which isn't too bad, but I'm desperate to get this out on the road. So just over a hundred quid and a few hours work was enough to get this thing installed. So um, yeah, let's see what it's like. I honestly have no idea how it's gonna go. And I'm not sure how robust this thing is gonna be. It seems quite solidly built, but I guess we'll find out. So this lovely looking jersey is just 17 quid. It's from today's sponsor, Sirocco, and it's from their new beginner collection. So if you're just getting into cycling or maybe you wanna update some of your old kit on a bit of a budget, definitely worth a look. I think it looks really lovely on. It's got minimal branding which is nice, it's super comfortable, and the materials and construction are top notch, as always. Anti-slip silicon hem around the bottom, four thread overlock stitching on all of the seams, 
for added durability and nice touches like reinforcing on high traffic areas around the rear pockets. They also have bib shorts and tights in the collection. These bib shorts are just 17 quid and the bib tights are only 21. They've ditched the shoulder straps to save a bit on cost, but they stay up really well with this rubbery, grippy material on the inside. And the padding, while basic, is decent. Definitely gets the job done. But Sirocco do all sorts of gear to suit any budget, really. I mean, I've been wearing their stuff for like three, three years nearly at this point. They're just a great sponsor and they genuinely do some great stuff. So if you wanna check them out, use my link in the description, save 10% off of everything. And if you do get something via that link, I get a bit of kickback as well, which is pretty cool. Um, anyway, <laughs> enough of that, let's get back to it. Okay, so I've been riding this bike with the suspension fork installed for a couple days at this point, and I've enjoyed using this so much more than I initially anticipated kind of going into this project. I mean, with the solid fork on, I've got these chunky 50C tires on, and they, they do soak up a lot of that rougher terrain, but just adding this suspension fork adds a, a sort of edge of capability to this bike that wasn't present before. So riding on the flats feels pretty much the same as it did before when it had the solid fork. I can lock out the suspension struts and carry pretty much the same speed. It does feel slightly more sluggish because you've obviously got that extra weight at the front, but all in all, it's not a big sacrifice on the flats. But obviously the big advantage here, that extra cushioning at the front, 40 millimeters of travel, it doesn't sound like much, but it just, it means you can tackle the rougher stuff at a much higher speed than I could before. I'm not necessarily riding different trails, but yeah, like I said, on the, on the rougher patches of those routes, you just don't have to worry so much about slowing down for every little pothole and bracing yourself. You can just kind of ride straight over and carry that speed. Now, to be completely frank with you, before putting this together, part of me thought <laughs> this was gonna be a complete waste of time. The bike was already great. What difference was a cheap fork with a seemingly tiny amount of travel? going to make. I assumed it would just add loads of weight to the bike and I'd end up resenting that and just removing it. But the more I used it over the next week, the more I loved it and realized it really suits the type of gravel riding that I tend to end up on. Okay, so here's the deal. A lot of the, the gravel tracks and routes around me are pretty, pretty rutted and terrible. There's not many places like this where it's a kind of nice gravel path that's relatively easy going. A lot of them are really rutted, muddy tracks that like tractors use. So you need big, chunky mountain bike tires, which I've got, but that extra cushion from the, the suspension is very, very welcome. I mean, don't get me wrong, it would be amazing to be able to get away with like a 35C tire and a rigid fork, but that's just not really possible where I live. I mean, I guess I could put the bike in the back of the car and specifically go searching for a gravel trail if that was the case. But having the suspension fork on the front means that I can just shoot out the door and not be too bothered about like the kind of trail and the kind of route that I end up on. That being said, the main drawback, it is the added weight on the bike. I mean, it's basically an extra kilo on the front and you do feel that, especially on the flats going into like sharp corners and stuff, but it is all well worth that sacrifice for the type of riding that I do around here. So yeah, I am absolutely loving having this thing on the bike. So is something like this for everyone? No, if you mainly do road and nice gravel, it's not really necessary. But if like me, you wanted to tackle a bit more of the rougher stuff, then yeah, I say you definitely won't regret it. But what about this fork? Specifically, now just to be completely clear, this video isn't sponsored in any way by uh, Koch, Koch, below, Koch below. Um, <laughs> yeah, I bought it on AliExpress because it was the cheapest one that I could find that, that looked pretty decent. And look, it's basic, pretty much as basic as they come in terms of suspension forks. These are air sprung with a hydraulic 
dampener. Now, as mentioned, you can add and remove air on one side to adjust to different rider weights, but unfortunately, a table wasn't supplied with, with suggested air pressures for different weights or whatever. But after Googling similar forks, I think this should be a good place to start, but you might have to have a play around with air pressures yourself. And on the other side, you can lock out the forks and adjust the compression dampening, which is basically how easily the fork starts its travel when you go over a bump. There's no way to adjust rebound on these things or set high and low speed compression or anything like that. These are just a basic set of gravel suspension forks. But they are way cheaper than similar big brand offerings. I mean, Fox do their 32TC for something between five and 700 quid. RockShox do their Rudy Ultimate for a similar price. And then Suntour, they do their GVX 700 for about 350 to 400 quid. So at 90 quid, uh, 112 with taxes and shipping. <laughs> These things are so, so much cheaper. And the build quality does seem pretty good. You've got a magnesium fork body, aluminium steerer tube, crown, and then pretty chunky 32 millimeter stanchions. In terms of the durability, for these things. I mean, look, I, I can't really comment. It's been 120 miles over about two weeks and I've tried to give them a really good thrashing <laughs> in that time. And they've been absolutely fine, but look, I'm a roadie. I'm not an expert on, on suspension forks. However, <laughs> let's be real for a second. If I did face an issue with these, I doubt they could be serviced very easily. I mean, it probably could be done. There are bolts on the bottom of each of the suspension struts. So presumably you can loosen those and pull them apart, but <laughs> characteristically with these uh, cheaper Chinese products, there is no technical or service documentation available. So in terms of like the weight of the oil, how much of it you'll need, uh, what replacement seals are available, stuff like that, yeah, you're on your own. So look, I honestly love these things. They've transformed the bike and they were super easy to install, no worries there. So for just over a <laughs> hundred quid, I cannot, complain. So if you want to check them out, I've left an affiliate link to the seller that I used on AliExpress in the description. It won't cost you any more if you get anything through that link, but I get a bit of kickback from AliExpress, which is cool. Anyway, this thing is staying on the front of the bike, so if anything changes, I will let you know. And for those wondering, the electronic gravel group set, the L2 EGR that I've been uh, running on this thing, it's been great actually. It's, it's, it's also been fully submerged, well, the rear derailleur has anyway, in like bog water <laughs> several times over the last two weeks, testing the suspension forks out, and it hasn't skipped a beat. So yeah, take from that what you will. Um, anyway, subscribe if you like this kind of thing, hit the like button if you enjoyed this episode. And lastly, I am, um, I'm getting increasingly frustrated <laughs> with this now quite scraggly beard. So give me a second. Maybe I'll just keep the moustache. <laughs> it's quite a full one, isn't it? I feel I look like um, I used to do a character back in some of my old videos, a police chief like Trace. I I need you back on this case, Trace. We've got some Chinese carbon wheels coming in. There's only one man I can trust. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Let me get rid of that thing. Do you know what? I think I'm actually going to keep it. It's not often that I've got a moustache <laughs> this long. Um, yeah, I'll leave it for 24 hours and see how I feel. Uh, right, <laughs> anyway, enough of that. See you next time, ciao. It's the bonus clip time. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, I may have got a little off track. <laughs> I'm in the middle of a wetland. Holy moly. Yeah, I took a wrong turn somewhere. Sheesh. Okay, safe to say, I'm kind of waterproof testing the rear derailleur today. Holy moly. That's a lot of water. Whoa. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Looks like I got out. It's just like wetland out there. I was literally sort of knee deep in mud. I mean, the derailleur was fully submerged for, uh, yeah, minutes at a time. So <laughs> we'll see, we'll see if it holds up. Beautiful day though. Um, shame it's a bit soggy, but 
such is life, I guess. All right, see you next time. Ciao.